all in all, I guess, 33 LED lights. So quite a lot, what a mess. And all this should be controlled by the Orlando D201N light controller. That's the light controller unit. It does come without any instructions. It only comes with an on-off switch and the board, even the board is not labeled, but you can find the instructions online. I found them, watch them here. And since there is also no labeling here, check how to connect the different LED lights. The squared pads are always plus and the round ones are always minus. So what we see, we have 33 LED lights and we have place for reverse lights rear and brake lights, left and right turning lights, and we have front beams, main beams, with two plus and one minus, and the same for the auxiliary lights with two plus and one minus. What means we can and have to connect a ton of LEDs in parallel, what will, what will be a huge mess. Wow. I have to think about this. I won't solder all those directly to the board as I would do, for example, to a Lambo C light controller where I can control 16 LEDs and have 16 spots for soldering those. Important is you can only connect in parallel two identical LED types. So not only two identical colors, even two identical LED types. So we can connect to the rear lights, of course, to white ones. To the brake and reverse lights, the two red ones, I will show you, I probably will connect four. Turning lights are clear, left and right. Orlando wants us to use yellow ones. Okay, I will use yellow ones and no orange ones. And then we can connect two different types of LEDs for the front beams with two plus and the common minus and two different LED types for the auxiliary lights with the common minus and two plus. And this, I prepared some three millimeter LEDs, which I will not use for the trailer here to test the board and to show you the board. It's like here, you see orange and white, and both have a plus, a separate plus and a common minus connect the orange or a red or whatever in parallel to the white one will not work. And now let's check how the light controller works. It of course only works with the D4L radio and then in parallel with the main truck and the puller truck and the light controller and the receiver of this. And then we will continue thinking how to connect 33 LED lights to this small board. Switch connected, connect the battery, it's a GSDPH 2.0 plug. I prefer the red GSDs for the 2S LiPos and binding is super simple. Simply press the bind button and switch on. Now fast blinking, switch on the radio, and now it's bound. You even can switch on the radio before. Here it's now set up, controlled by the AUX button. What's quite strange in the Orlandos, if you have switched off the main beams, turning lights won't work. You have to switch on main beams by pressing the AUX button, channel 3 button once. And now you can see the turning lights work. Then we have 
rear light, what's also brake light. So if you stop, it's brake light and we have reverse light. One click, everything off. Turning lights are off too, what's quite okay. And two clicks, fast clicks are hazard lights. So those also work if the main beams are off, only turning lights don't work. And a long press are the auxiliary lights. What is green and blue here, as already mentioned, only connect in parallel LEDs of the same type. You can use two for the auxiliary lights and two here, orange and white for the main beams. Break and reverse. One click, main beams off, long press, auxiliary lights off and three fast clicks. That's this, I don't know, blinking music light. So I decided to connect the LEDs the following. First of all, Orlando wants us to put two white LEDs in this position here. But at least in my country, you can't have white lights in reverse direction, exception the reverse light. So I put the red ones in here. They should be on all the time when the lights are on. The problem is we have already a ton of orange lights on the side as running lights, which go in parallel with the white lights, which are the normal front running lights. And I'm not able to connect a third color in parallel with this light controller. And additionally, if I would do this, those red lights would always be on with full brightness, while the stop brake lights will be on in about half of possible brightness. And if you brake, it will be on full. So this wouldn't look good anyway very bright red lights here and only weakly glimming red lights here. So I will connect those two lights in parallel to the brake lights. So I have four brake lights then. And then I will do as Orlando recommends three yellow lights, which will be turning lights here on the side, on each side and three orange lights as running lights, which will be on as soon as the lights are on. So with the normal white lights here. And then I do have for the auxiliary channel only one color left. What is what is white? I decided to make those roof lights. This one I did already install white. I don't know if it wouldn't make any sense to make those red. I don't know how this works in a trailer and those can't be red anyway. I will make those connected to the auxiliary channel so I can switch on those white lights then as a kind of parking lights here in front and here on reverse and here above of the windows are white LEDs to two here and two here and one here so five more white leds those are a ton a ton a ton of leds to connect and i decided not to run all wires of all leds to the light controller but also not to connect all in parallel of the same color of the same type of course because that's if that's all soldered it's a pain if one light doesn't work anymore. So I decided to make groups of LEDs and connect two, three in parallel and then run a wire here and make a plug and make plugs to the light controller and connect them that way. That way I will also be able to plug and unplug those LEDs. If you have such a ton of LEDs, 33, you know, if something's not working, it's always a pain and it's much easier if you can connect at least, for example, here, those two. Those I did already finish. They work. 
So here you can see those work nicely. You can see the single LEDs. And I will make groups like this. And then plugs. Still do not know yet which plugs I will use on the end of each group. And then make from the light controller wires with plugs in parallel where I can connect the different groups. And it's a ton, a ton to solder. Here, I can already tell you guys, don't make the wires too short. I did this only, that short wires for those roof lights. I thought I could connect them in parallel here. That's impossible. And it's also impossible here. However, I made both of those with such short wires. And then you have a big problem. You see, I... Maybe you can see it that way. I had to connect the wires and to solder here inside. That was not easy to connect the two in parallel, the two plus and the two minus, and then connect them to a 30 gauge silicon coated wire. So with longer wires up to here, this would be much easier and much less danger to damage the trailer body with the soldering iron. Here I have to do the same thing. It's impossible to put larger wires here. You could open the, this bore, but I will do it again that way and then solder in here inside. I like the thrill. And all this, yeah, a ton, a ton, a ton of LEDs. I did already solder all the LEDs. And that's important. I used different colored wires for all LEDs. For the orange ones, I used green and blue. For the red ones, I used red. For the yellow ones, what do you think? Yes, I used yellow. And for the white ones, big surprise. I used white wires. I did already think a little bit on which of those LEDs I will need longer wires and shorter wires because most of the LEDs are placed in those LED buckets and most of those buckets do have two openings for the two wires of each LED, what's quite nice. Some I guess only two do not. So therefore you will have to solder the wires differently. Here you see one, there is no opening for a wire and you have to glue the LED on this place. And here I did already connect one. Come on, you're on camera. And four gluing the LEDs. I may use a little bit of chrome in all buckets, but not a lot. Maybe it helps a little bit. It's quite difficult with a marker. I would be better with a brush. And for gluing those LEDs, I use T7000, also for blinding the back sides, but I really love this glue. It's not permanent. It sticks quite well, but you can remove it if you want totally easily and that's perfect in my opinion for gluing SMD LEDs on their position. So 33 LEDs already soldered, only few installed, but I guess many of you want to know how to solder SMD LEDs because they think that's super super difficult. Well it's not easy but not super difficult. I will show you some tricks about soldering if you want.